In the last video, we saw some of the problems associated with using an acyl chloride or an anhydride as the electrophile in a nucleophilic acyl substitution with an enolate. And at the very end, we noted that really esters are the ideal electrophiles when we're talking about the acylation of enolates. More specifically, we're going to focus on the acylation of ester enolates which is a reaction called the Claisen condensation. It is possible to acylate ketone enolates using esters as the electrophiles under certain conditions, but we've got to be a little bit careful. And if we think back to the problems with crossed aldol condensations, we'll realize that similar issues apply here. The enolate can generate other enolates, which could generate a variety of addition or substitution products that would lead to a mess. So for the time being, I want to focus on dimerization again, the reaction between two identical ester molecules to form a product of substitution now, since the ester contains an internal leaving group in the form of the alkoxy group. When two ester molecules are involved in a reaction like this in the presence of alkoxide base, the reaction is called Claisen condensation. It's called a condensation reaction because a small molecule is given off the conjugate acid of the alkoxy leaving group. And the hallmark of the Claisen condensation is that one of the esters, here the one I'm drawing in red, serves as the nucleophile via an enolate, and the other serves as an electrophile at its carbonyl carbon. In the product, we find a new bond between these two atoms, the alpha carbon of the nucleophilic ester molecule and the carbonyl carbon of the electrophilic ester molecule. From the electrophile's perspective, then this looks like nucleophilic acyl substitution. And from the nucleophile's perspective, this looks like the substitution of H for an acyl group, which we might call acylation of the alpha carbon. One other thing we can note about this product is that it's a beta dicarbonyl compound. More specifically, it's a compound in which we have an ester whose beta carbon bears a carbonyl group, or a beta keto ester, since the blue carbonyl group is part of a ketone and the red carbonyl group is part of an ester. From the nucleophilic esters perspective, this reaction looks a lot like an aldol addition. But the key difference between the Claisen condensation and the aldol addition is that after the initial nucleophilic addition of the enolate to the electrophilic carbonyl carbon, in an aldol context, we end up with a tetrahedral intermediate, if you will, that lacks a good leaving group linked to the tetrahedral carbon. That's not the case in the Claisen condensation. We can expel a leaving group and reestablish a carbonyl group in a Claisen context. The ultimate result is that in an aldol context, the reaction that we ultimately end up with is a net addition process, addition of the elements of the nucleophilic carbonyl compound from which the enolate was derived to the electrophile. But the essence of the Claisen condensation is substitution, and we can see that right here substitution of the alkoxy group in the electrophilic ester for the enolate of the nucleophilic ester. One important question that we should ask right off the bat is related to the favorability, that is, the thermodynamic favorability of this reaction. Is it favorable overall? The answer is actually not an unequivocal yes. There are very specific conditions under which the Claisen condensation is favorable. And to begin exploring these, I want to look at a very simple example of Claisen condensation, just without worrying about the mechanistic details, but looking only at the molecules involved on the reactant and product side. In essence, what we've done in Claisen condensation is replaced a carbon-oxygen bond with a carbon-carbon bond. A carbon-oxygen bond in the electrophilic ester has been replaced with a carbon-carbon bond in the beta-keto ester product. In addition, because the reaction expels an alkoxide leaving group, it actually looks like the alkoxide is catalytic. As long as the OR- that we use as the alkoxide matches the OR group in the starting esters, this process looks catalytic overall in the alkoxide. So the key difference really comes down to this bond, which is present in the product but not in the starting materials, versus this bond in, say, the electrophilic ester molecule, which is present in one of the starting esters, but not in the final product. In fact, the CO bond tends to be stronger 
than the C-C bond. This means that a simple Claisen process, a simple base-mediated or base-catalyzed nucleophilic acyl substitution process involving an enolate and an ester electrophile, ester enolate and ester electrophile, generally favors the reactants. This should raise a lot of questions in your mind. How does it even make sense, then, that we can do nucleophilic acyl substitution by an enolate on an ester, given the fact that the starting esters are more stable than the beta diketone product? We're going to look at the mechanism of the Claisen condensation next, and in looking at the mechanism, we'll understand how we can get this reaction to work. It only works when there are alpha hydrogens present in the beta diketone product that can be deprotonated by the alkoxide that's generated. This means that the reaction is not really catalytic in the alkoxide because the alkoxide will spontaneously remove one of these now acidified protons between the two carbonyl groups and form the alcohol stoichiometrically. So we need a full equivalent of alkoxide base to do this. This is also why we need acidic workup to finish up this reaction. In order to generate the neutral diketone product, we need to add acid to reprotonate that alpha carbon between the two carbonyls. We'll see the mechanistic details of this in the next video.